Hey guys, we are senior industrial engineering students at Auburn University and we're doing a design of experiments project on a 3D printer. We're testing uh, the strength of 3D printed ABS plastic parts. So we hope you enjoy this walkthrough of our design of experiments. So first we'll just go through some background information about 3D printers. So what are 3D printers used for? Well, they actually have a, a vast number of applications. You can see from the list below, there's just there's a lot of stuff you can do with them. Some uh, one interesting thing that somebody's printed is actually a uh, an ear, which is on the top right there. Um, below it, you can see this is actually the 3D printer that we have in our basement in Shelby Laboratories. So we're just going to take a second to give you a more in-depth look at the MakerBot Replicator 2. Okay, so we'll just take you through a little closer look at our 3D printer here at Shelby. This is the basic structure of it, so you can tell it's not too big. We got a control display where we can modify the settings. Um, we got a hot plate that um, that heats up and it allows the material to to be formed correctly on it. Uh, you can see here these are the two extrusion heads. Two colors, uh, blue and orange War Eagle. Uh, they got fans on to modulate the temperature, and this is a basically a giant uh, XYZ pivot grid, so that the part can be built correctly. You can see the plastic comes through these two tubes right here, and it uh, it comes from two spools, and it's controlled by this computer over here with the. Uh, essentially a CAD program on it. So now that you have a little better idea about what a 3D printer actually is, we'll just go through a few more cool items that have been produced by them. The top left, you can see that's the world's first 3D printed acoustic guitar. Below it is uh, the body for an Aston Martin DB4. That car parts are really hard to find. So this guy just said, hey, I'll just use a 3D printer to print my own parts. And on the bottom right, you can see that that's actually a prosthetic leg that has been 3D printed. So in that case, you know, a 3D printer was used to drastically improve someone's quality of life. So how does it work? Well, 3D printing is known as additive manufacturing for a reason. It takes small amounts of material and uh, over the course of time, it lays them down in layers and uh, build the part from the bottom up. And the uh, the part can basically be designed in any shape, and it's uh, it's read from a digital, basically a digital CAD file. Uh, parts can be printed in plastic, metal, and ceramic. So although other 3D printers can print in various materials, the one we have available to us only prints in ABS plastic. You can see it has just tons of uses from musical instruments to uh, appliances to Legos. One of the characteristics, specifically one of the ones we were concerned about, was the strength. So what's the problem? Why do we care if 3D printed ABS plastic parts are strong? Well, those parts are currently being used primarily in prototyping. And uh, what that means is whenever a new product is designed, they take the parts that make it up and 3D print them and then assemble them. And they're actually testing if, the, if that's going to be a good product to make or not. So they need it to be as strong as it's going to be whenever they mass produce it. So it's a really important for those parts that make up the uh, whatever they're producing to be strong. And also, there's a lot of people that think that the future of mass production is actually going to be 3D printing. So, of course, if those are the final parts that you're going to be providing to the consumer, they need to be strong. So the problem is the 3D printer has quite a few settings that can be changed. And uh, especially to someone who's not familiar with 3D printers, those can be quite daunting. So the point of our project is to uh, perform an experiment to tell you which settings should be changed to make a stronger plastic, a stronger ABS plastic part, and what settings should they be? 
So in order to perform our experiment, we follow the seven steps designing experiments. The first one, recognize the problem, but we've already done that. We know that uh, we want to figure out the settings on the 3D printer that make the strongest ABS plastic part. So what's next? Choose the factors and levels. We'll spend just a minute discussing that. So what factors and levels did we choose? Well, the first one we chose was infiltration rate. That's the density that the printing fills in the middle of the part. You can essentially think about it as how hollow is the part on the inside. It can only go from 0 to 100%. Uh, 0 being you would not print anything in 100% being it would be a solid block of plastic. So to get on the outer edges of those two bounds, we chose 20, and 80, 20 to 80%. The second factor was extrusion temperature. This is a temperature at which the plastic is laid. So if you think about a hot glue gun, you can think of this as this is the temperature of the nozzle that's melting the glue. Uh, our bounds on this are between 220 and 235 Celsius. And we chose those because going lower than 220 degrees Celsius would basically jam up the printer and it wouldn't be hot enough to print the part. And 235 was just on the upper spec limit of the printer's manual. So the third factor, layer height. How thick can each layer of plastic be? You can essentially think about, if you're thinking about the hot glue gun analogy, this is essentially the diameter, so the diameter of the bead of glue that you're laying down. So obviously a thinner one is going to give you higher resolution, more precise, but also require you to lay down more layers instead of a thicker um, thicker diameter. So we've chosen our factors and their, their respective levels. The next thing to do is select a response variable. So as we've already alluded to, the response variable that we chose was strength. Specifically, how can the strength be altered by varying the previous parameters? So how are we going to measure the strength of our plastic part? Well, we decided to do a strength by deflection test, which we'll go into more detail later. Okay, here we have a rough example of the deflection test that we performed on our parts. We would count the number of pixels um, that, that was deflected by that movement of the part. So now that we've selected our response variables along with their factors and respective levels, we need to figure out exactly what type of experimental design are we going to use. Okay, so we have three factors, each with two levels, and uh, that, that gives us a multi-level two to the third factorial design. And what that basically means is that in order to test all of the combinations of uh, factors and levels, we need eight different part combinations. And because these parts take quite a bit of time to print, we were hoping that three replications would be sufficient. So that'd be a total of 24 different data points. So we will um, see on the next slide if that is gonna be a sufficient number of runs. Okay, so in order to determine if the three replications of the eight combinations was sufficient for our experiment, we uh, got a, a calculation of the power um, off of Minitab. And the difference there is eight pixels, and that's essentially saying what we consider to be a difference. Uh, and that was sufficient based on what we were seeing from the pictures of the experiment. And uh, that gave us a power of 81 which was enough to say that our experiment was valid. Okay, so we've chosen our experimental design. Now the fun stuff begins. Now we actually get to perform the experiment, which we'll talk about now. Okay, so how do we perform the experiment? We did a three-point deflection test and uh, that basically measures the amount of deflection in the part, so how much it bends. Um, we used a vision capture system to uh, record and document that deflection, and then we actually counted the pixels um, between the baseline photograph that you can see on the right and one that would be deflected. And in order to minimize variability, 
we put the camera on a tripod um, and we also mark the center point of all of our all of our 3d printed plastic parts so that the weight would be hung on the the very center point each time also we marked on the uh, the two boards we marked the exact location that the part should be so that it will be placed in the same location every time and uh, we took other various measures to reduce our variability so the next logical step after performing the experiment is of course to analyze the data which we'll talk about now So in order to analyze the data, we used a three-way ANOVA and Minitab. Just a little side note before we can truly discuss this is to uh, explain blocking, which is the first row of the data. What this means, it simply means the location of the part on the printer. Um, we printed them three at a time, so we wanted to just control that and make sure that the location of the part um, was not messing with our end results. And as you can see from the p-values, blocking actually was significant. So it's very important that we measured that. Other cool things you notice, all three of our factors, infill rate, extrusion temperature, and layer height are all significant. And one other significant thing was the interaction between extrusion temperature and layer height. So what does that mean for them to be significant? Well, it simply means that they do have an effect on the strength of the part when you change them um, from their respective levels. Uh, it's also important to note that our R squared value is very high, which means that our model is a good fit for our data. This slide is simply something that's necessary whenever you uh, conduct ANOVA analysis. It just verifies that the air terms from your, um, from your data points are normally distributed. And you can see that they are because they follow the uh, normal probability plot line. Um, they're also randomly distributed. The histogram doesn't look perfectly normal. But we did look into that and we attribute that to the uh, low number of data points combined with the uh, quite large bin size. Okay, so let's take just a minute to look at our main effect and interaction plots. From the main effect plots, which are on the left, you can see that as each of the factors um, goes from its low level to its high level, the deflection count actually decreases and what that means um, in terms of our plastic parts is that they're actually stronger so you can tell that on their high level um, all the fa when all the factors are on their high level it actually makes the parts stronger on the right we have our interaction plots now the way this works is basically if these lines were perfectly parallel to each other then that would signify that there is no interaction. And if you remember from our ANOVA analysis, the only statistically significant interaction was the interaction between extrusion temperature and layer height. And let's just verify here by this graph. You can see that those two lines <clears throat> are the least parallel, which just backs up that previous analysis. So now we'll just take a second to look at the regression analysis. Um, basically, this is an equation that you can use to predict values in between the values that were tested. And you can do that because the values we tested were numbers, so like 20% infill rate and 80% infill rate. Um, it's important to note that our R squared value for this regression equation is also high. Which, um, which tells you that the model is a good fit for the data for this as well. Okay, so we've successfully analyzed the data. Now it's time to draw some conclusions and provide recommendations. So what can we conclude from this experiment? Well, we found out that blocking, infiltration rate, extrusion temperature, and layer height all significantly affected the deflection of ABS plastic, and therefore they all affected the strength. 
there was also a significant interaction between layer height and extrusion temperature. So whenever you're deciding what settings you're going to set your printer on, this is something you should consider. Uh, stronger a for stronger ABS plastic parts, all of the factors should be set at their higher setting. Um, it's important to note that at the higher setting, especially for infill rate, it uh, significantly increases the time that the part is going to take to be printed. And that makes sense because you're, you physically are laying more plastic down, so that just takes more time. So it's important to note that if, um, if the strength is not crucial for the part, then it, would, it might be a good idea to set the infill rate on the lower setting. So we'll just talk a little bit now about cost implications. As we mentioned earlier, the high settings, especially uh, infiltration rate, lead to longer printing times. And as we move forward to additive manufacturing, um, print time is definitely going to be a crucial factor to minimize. So if you've got to print a high strength part, definitely use the high settings. But for lower strength parts that can be printed on, on the lower settings, then you should absolutely do that because time is money and uh, if you can get away with uh, with having parts that aren't as strong it certainly cuts the time down because we all know that after all saving one second can make a huge difference War Eagle we hope you enjoyed this uh, description of our design of experiments